Action! Hello there, my name is Georgie Newbury and I'm a flower farmer and forest based here between Fairshrubble, Broughton and up and coming Wincanton. And it is the worst weekend's weather you could possibly imagine for the end of May. Look at my hair, it is horrible and it's kind of constant drizzle, uh, gale force winds and you may be thinking, oh, do I have to go outside? What can I do this weekend in the garden? Well, I thought I would take you around my garden on a little tour and show you one or two things that I'm planning to do despite the weather. In the distance, you can see there's the letter spotted for Britzio Bocca and he's off to examine his orchids. This is an obsessive compulsive behaviour. <laughs> she that. No, he does do this a lot though, because his orchids are the great love of his life and he's just checking that they're still coming soon this field will be a mass of orchids and I'll show you some of them but they're not even shooting yet the leaves are just there now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of these cowslip plants which are in a nursery bed and since we've had lots and lots of lovely rain I'm going to do something I wouldn't normally do. Normally I'd leave them and transplant them in the autumn but we've had masses of rain so I'm going to dig these little people up and start moving them around the meadow. Split any of the larger clumps like this one will make three or four clumps and I will split them up and put them along the edges of the meadow and in some of the long grass and make more plants. Now as you can see the tulips are pretty much over. We did we did well with them in the end they were a slow start but in the end they were really fantastic. Um, but I need this space because I haven't got endless space in the garden so another job I can do on a rainy weekend is lift the tulips and make space for my dahlias. I'll show you the dahlias in a little while. We grow tulips like annuals so we always have new bulbs every year and we plant them in different places. We don't really have very cold winters here and so we suffer a bit with tulip fire. Here is my beloved queen of the night. Um, funnily enough we have cut about 200 of her uh, so although there are some left what I'll do is I'll cut these and give them to my friend Andrew for the weekend because I know he'll enjoy them and then I'll dig up the bulbs we compost the bulbs and then order new for next year um oh yes there's a little purple person I'm going to show you them let's have a look now this is a nice little bed of honesty linaria which I've had flowering for about six weeks and have been cropping from quite a lot and I'm going to leave them now to set seed and I'll see if I can find you some beginnings of some seed. They're probably here somewhere if I look. Uh, here we go. Now, it's my hand in the way, but you see the tiny little green pod there? That's going to be the seed. And honesty makes a lovely, quite, <laughs> take my hand away, quite big seed pod two seeds, seeds in each pod and they're lovely silvery papery seed which are great on my christmas decorations so i'm going to leave them now to set their seed and i'll harvest the sparkly silver seed heads a little later in the summer i expect i'll show you how i do it now i'm just going to test my peony heads as I pass to see if they're soft enough which is a sign that they are beginning to be ripe enough to, to pick. They're not. This morning I didn't have my phone on me or I would have filmed it. There was an ant crawling around here and what the ant does is help start the peeling back process of the outer leaves which uh, means that the peony can then ripen and open. So I was glad to see the ant. These peonies have only been in for a year, so they're really very young. I haven't grown them before, but I had a patch. 
a bit of a spot of a spot of bed so I've put a few in and so this is only their second spring something else I probably wouldn't think of doing unless we had all this damp weather is digging up all my wild bluebells I've been thinking about this doing this for a while and splitting them and planting them into the orchards and in the long grass under the trees because they've been really really happy this was I suppose I planted about 100 150 bulbs here about six years ago and you can see I've got a great mat of wild bluebells and I cut them but I don't cut them in such enormous quantities so I think I'm going to split them and put them in to the orchards somewhere like there so that they can then spread around in the orchards and be very beautiful for everybody to admire. I have also these lovely little silver scylla. These are called Star of Bethlehem and I'm going to do the same with them. Normally at the end of May the ground is dry and not terribly welcoming for split bulbs so um, this is an opportunity that this bad weather has given me and I'm going to take advantage of it. Now normally at this time of year the cold frame would be stuffed to the gills with things hardening off. Uh, for example the beans and I think I will take these out this weekend and let them start to harden off out there. I'm not sure about the courgettes or the squashes but I think they could be a bit bigger before they get put outside. Um, oh, look, nice little lot of lettuce coming along there. I won't take those out at all. They'll just stay here and we'll just take a pair of scissors to them from time to time and let them cut and come again. And then there's something in the polytunnel that's time to get them out as well. It's not just the beans which are ready to come out. Now, normally my dahlias, here they all are, by this time of year are really quite big and much too big to be here in the tunnel so I will have taken would normally have taken them out and put them in the cold frame to harden off ready for planting in about a week normally I'd plant my dahlias out on the 1st of June um, and but it has been so cold and so miserable that I've kept them in here for a bit longer to get them to shoot nicely uh, and but I think this weekend I've got to start hardening them off I've got to get them in the ground or we won't have a dahlia crop and that would be a disaster so uh, that's another job <laughs> to support the mousetrap um, that's another job for the weekend look they haven't even all really got come yet but they will they will and actually if I put them in the cold frame they'll keep coming along nicely and then I can plant them when the tulips have been dug up, you see it's a whole, everything follows on to, from each other. You dig up the tulips, you plant the dahlias where the tulips were. You dig up the dahlias, you plant something else where they were. That's how it works. And the dahlias, as you can see, they, they're kind of going all the way along here. Here are the end of the anemones. The ranunculus are really sort of deep inside this uh, jungle of Larkspur and Amimagus and Papillurum and various other bits and pieces. Mm, always have a bit of rope. At this time of year when the seed mix has got a bit out of control <laughs> uh, I have a big tidy up and I put everything into a nice file alphabetical order and um, that way I can rootle around and get what I want later on. So now you see I'm all set for calendula and sweet peas but it's time to order some biennial seed. I'm a bit low on foxgloves and dianthus and all those lovely things. What's a biennial? Why do I need to sow them? When do I need to sow them? Join me on my online class coming up. Have a look at the website and book a place. Now, having had a bit of a clear out, I've also sorted out my biennial seed because it's pretty much time to sow the seed. And mm, nice mix I've got. It is possible, just possible, I might order a little bit more ready for sowing on or around the 15th of June. You 
begin to see the schedule my life is driven by. That's definitely a good job for a rainy weekend. Clearing up seed, having a tidy up and seeing what you've got and if there's anything you really need to order. I always need more seed. Always, even when it looks like this. So if you've enjoyed our videos, please uh, subscribe and click the bell and you'll be told when we've got another clip coming up. I hope you've been inspired to get out into the garden this weekend despite the weather and hopefully the sun will come out next week. <laughs> we've all got our fingers crossed and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye!